I'm going to break one of my own rules to solve this championship Sudoku. Keep watching if you want to see what the rule is and why you also need to break it to solve this puzzle the right way. Click below if you want to give this puzzle a go. And with that, it's solving time. We're going to forego here in block eight. You might notice you have two fours here in columns four and six, and fours in row seven and eight. Only one place left for a four. Greetings, friend. This is the last and hardest of the Sudoku Grand Prix Round 7 Classics. I'll show you why you need to break a common rule regarding Championship Sudoku in order to solve it. First, though, you need to find as much restriction as possible. Look here in Block 5. You'll notice there's a 2 that cuts across Row 6 and a 2 that comes up um, 4. There's only two places for a 2. So I'm going to mark that using Snyder Notation. Anytime in a 3x3 three three block, two possibilities for a candidate, you mark it. In case we solve one of these cells, we can solve the other right away. You can also do some Snyder marking with the twos down here in block 9. Only two possibilities. And Simon Anthony says when the twos are not lined up in a row or column, it usually spells trouble. And in this case, it does. Okay, there's no Snyder markings we can make with these ones or with the threes at this time. Let's look at the fours. You notice in block one, you can put Snyder fours right there. And in block three, and they're also diagonal. And then that's it with the fours. The fives, we can make a solve here. You got this five in row two, five in row one, five in column five, we can solve for two in block two. And then with these two fives and this five, fives in block four. I'm not done with the fives yet, because with these two fives, Snyder fives block eight. And with these two fives, Snyder fives in block nine. That's it with the fives. Moving on to the sixes. With these two sixes, Snyder sixes in block two. And if you go down to block nine with these two sixes, Snyder 6 is right there. A lot of Snyder marks going on down here in the bottom right. 7s. This 7 and this 7. Snyder 7s in block 8. Nothing else you can do with the 7s. Uh, with the 8s, you can make some Snyder marks. We have an uh, 8 that we can solve, actually, in block 8, right? With these three 8s, one place in 8 goes right there. This place in that Snyder, 5. And now with this... 8 and this 8, you can actually solve for an 8 in block 2. Okay. Um, you know the marks we make with the 8s and nothing we can do with the 9s at this time. And so a tip for you, we made some marks, but we also made some solves. So you need to go back through the Snyder marking, look for more restrictions, and this time focus more on maybe pairs. Okay. So look at this 2 here and this 2. Now... The twos are in these two spots here in block two. They're limited to those two spots. And so I'll put Snyder marks here, but they're also a pointing pair. What does that mean? It says the twos are restricted in column five here in block two. Two can't be anywhere else in the column. If you try to put a two right there, you have no place to put a two in block two. So what that means is you can displace that Snyder two and solve for two in block five. Nice little pointing pair there. Very helpful for us. And now you'll see with this two and this two, you have Snyder twos here in block four. And that two there. You might notice that the two and the five are in the column. They're in the row six and they're in row four now. And so they're limited to the same two spots. So another tip for you, this is a situation where you see Snyder on top of each other. You found a hidden pair. And so... Since the two and the five have to be somewhere in block four, they restrict the same two cells, that are the only two candidates that can go there. So you can remove all of the candidates from those two orange cells. And I cover hidden pairs and pointing pairs along with the other most popular strategies in my Sudoku solving guide. You can download it for free from the pinned comment below. And I'll get back to why those seven strategies are so important here in just a little bit. After finding this hidden pair, you can actually make a solve with the 8s now. Because of this 8 and this 8, 
the only place an A can go in block four is right there. So huge in Championship Sudoku to use these hidden pairs as kind of like place markers to help you find more restrictions. And then with this eight now on that eight, we have Snyder eights in block one. And with these two eights and this eight, Snyder eights in block six. And looking at the nines, we actually can take this nine now and put Snyder nines in block five. I'm gonna highlight a cell for you because this is a cell, if you saw this, then you got a lot further on with the solve than you would just by doing normal Snyder notation because we can actually solve another nine right here if you saw what could be in this cell. But it's hard to spot is that there's, normally you wanna look for naked singles Give me a little hint here. When you have five or more candidates in a row, column, or block. In this situation, you only have four here in the row, four in the column, and only four in the block. So you may not look there. But however, you may notice that you have a one, two, that look at this cell, three and a four, five and a six, seven, and an eight. All look at that cell. This is actually a naked single nine. And by finding this, you're going to see we're going to unlock a lot more solves. But it's not the rule that I'm breaking. That's coming up here in just a little bit. But this is going to be huge. And I'll show you why. Because once you solve this for a 9, look down this column. You have a 3, 4, 6, 8, 9. You need a 1, 2, 5, 7. And you may notice that you have this 1, 2, 5 right there. This is going to be a 7. That's a 2, 5. It's going to be a 1, 2, and this is going to be a 1, 5. And since the 1s are restricted here in block 7, the column 3, that is a claiming pair. 1s can't be in any of these other cells anymore because you put a 1 over here, no place to put a 1 in column 3. Okay? And then with this 1 and this 1, you could actually put Snyder 1s here in block 4. All right. After doing that, we can see with the seven here and these the seven and the seven here so all for seven block three and then notice how this one comes down into block eight creates a, another pointing pair of ones so a pointing pair of ones here ones can't be in any of these spots anymore and because of this one it can't be here you can solve this cell for a one which displaces that snyder six displacing that snyder two and now because you put that nine there you can solve this for a nine and this for a three. If you don't spot this naked single nine, you're not going to get all these solves in. Really nice here. And now that nine allows you to displace that Snyder nine. Solve for a nine right here. We're going to be able to solve all of this block. And then you think this is an easy puzzle because we're getting so many solves here, right? You see a three and a six. There's your three and there's your six. But it's about to come to a halt here. We've got one more cell in block five. It's got to be a seven. Displacing that Snyder 7. So you can solve for 7 here. Displacing that Snyder 1. Displacing the Snyder 2. 1, 5, 2. See how all that works? Because of those marks, start filling in all of those blocks. You have a 3, 9 naked pair right there. And then we can do a little bit more solving here. Uh, you may notice that with uh, the 2 that we just solved, Look here in row seven now. Whoops, whoops. Row seven. Got a three, four, six, seven, eight. You need a one, two, five, nine. Got the one, two, and nine all coming there. So that's got to be a five. One, two's here. So the nine's got to be there. And with this two, you know that's going to be your one. That's going to be your two. And we just displaced the Snyder five, so we can mark that right there. Which leaves you with a six, nine. Naked pair, block nine. Okay, we've got a little bit more we can do. If you look across row four, you might notice there's a three eight in row four. There's a three eight in row six, and there's a three eight in column eight. I like what the setter did here. So the threes are restricted in the same two cells as the eights. So we have another hidden pair. The three eight hidden pair, which means you have a six seven naked pair right there. Very helpful. And then with the sixes cutting across here, you're going to have a pointing pair of sixes in block four. Restricts the sixes to these two cells in block seven. And now we're to that point where we need 
to break the rule. And this is something I've never seen before in Championship Sudoku. This strategy, this thing you have to do to move forward, I've not seen any other puzzle in a classic in a Grand Prix before. But before we get to that, I want to hear from you. What did you do at this point in the puzzle? You need something a little more than what I've shown you to move forward. Please, please put it in the comments. I want to hear from you. Help me build the best Sudoku community on YouTube. It starts with your feedback, and I respond to each and every one. I actually learned quite a bit about the strategies you use to solve puzzles like this. I'm sure the other viewers will as well. And so what's the rule I'm breaking? Well, in my free Sudoku solving guide, I talk about seven strategies, and I've showed you all of them as we've been doing the solving. Now, you got the naked singles, you got the hidden singles, you got the naked pairs and the hidden pairs, you have the claiming pairs and the pointing pairs using the single cannons, and then you have naked triples. Those are the seven main strategies, and they help you solve over 80% of the puzzles like this including new york times hard however sometimes you gotta go past that if you just keep looking and when i saw this in uh, for time i didn't look past the seven strategies and i got stuck if you just keep looking at those seven strategies you're not going to find what you need to move forward so you have to kind of break out of that paradigm and look for something beyond the seven strategies that's the rule i had to break to get there in order to do this i want to Fill out a few more of these columns because the next step would be to start filling out a little bit more in the puzzle you want us to look for single can strategies or you want to look for five value cells and there's going to be something really cool here i'm about to show you as soon as i fill out row three row four oops got four right there those that's seven right there. No one, no nine, no nine here, no one seven there, and that's still one four seven nine. And then fill out row six. You get a one four six right here. Okay, that can be a one four six. That can be a one four six. This cannot be a four. Okay, and so what you need to do is look. Lies by by cells. Look for a lot of conjugate pairs. So if you notice across row two, three, four naked pair, uh, this is a conjugate pair in two different ways. One, the three and the four are conjugate. You know, and what it means is they're dependent on each other. You know, either this cell's a three. If it's not a three, it has to be a four. So they're a pair within the cell. Also, the fours are a conjugate pair across row two and the threes. So either force here, if it's not here, it has to be right there. These conjugate pairs are the backbone of advanced strategies. And what you have to clue in on is you might notice you have a lot of these conjugate pairs, these fours, these diagonals, and there's also some other conjugate pairs in this puzzle for the four. So let's look at where all the fours could be right now. All right, click on the fours here. Fours can be there, they can be there. It can be here, it can be right there. Those are these fours in this puzzle. This is actually really cool. The setter did who made this from India. Okay, that was all the possibilities for the fours. You might notice a ton of conjugate pairs. In fact, there's several advanced strategies you can use right now to do some more solving. If you looked at these cells, and then you add this as a fin, you have a fin X wing. In columns two and seven, and you can make a solve here. Come over here, these cells in this cell, you have another findex wing, and you can make a solve in this block. With all these conjugate pairs, you have a nice two string kite, conjugate pair coming down the column across the row, uh, multiple two string kites. I mean, you can, you can go here, 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 and here, and make a two string kite. So, findex wing, two string kites. You can even do empty rectangles if you wanted. Uh, these are some nice fancy shapes here. This empty rectangle coming over here. You can make an elimination. But my favorite, and the one that's actually the most powerful of all of these strategies is the skyscraper. And the reason being a Sudoku skyscraper can do eliminations in more than one block. The other ones usually only solve one cell or eliminate from one cell. And so this is gonna be a little more important. So where's the skyscraper that you can use? It's here. There's, ver there's horizontal ones, but the vertical one I'm about to show you is probably the most powerful one here. You'll notice a skyscraper is when uh, Sudoku 
column, there's two candidates possible in two different columns. They share a base, so row four. So that kind of compare, they're both in row four. And then the tips of the skyscraper are in different rows of the same three by three band. So this is a three by three band, it's also called a belt, and they're in different rows. And what you may notice with the fours, no other fours possible in those columns, the fours gotta be here. If it's not here, because of the conjugate pair relationship, a four would have to be here, which would eliminate a four from this cell and make this purple cell a four. So either a four is here, not there, it's gotta be there. So at least one of those purple cells has to contain a four. So you can remove a four from any cell that sees both. Both these cells right here, you can eliminate a four. If you try to put a four in one of those cells, you would run out of places to put the fours in, in those particular columns, and that's not good. This is beautiful, skyscraper. Not seen it before, had to break the rule. If you see this, then you can go on and make some more solves here, because what does this do for us? It allows you to solve and eliminate the fours from these two cells, like I just said, and now you can make a solve here, because these are the only two fours left in blocks one and three. So we can solve those cells right away for a four. Let's remove some of these colors, and now we're going to see what that does for the rest of our solving. But if you want to learn more about skyscrapers, check out this tutorial. And so now you notice with that four, that's got to be a three. That's got to be an eight, looking good. And then with this four, that's got to be a seven. And with this four, that's got to be a nine. And now you got a one and an eight right here. So far, looking good. We can disambiguate the three eight hidden pair right there, looking nice. And then you have a full house up here so that's got to be a three okay so far so good what else can we do you know you kind of get rid of we got the seven so that's got to be the six that's got to be a seven right there you know let's get rid of that seven nine it kind of creates a one four going on there get rid of that seven right there get rid of the six right there and where else do we move you got a two and a nine up here with this two there's two there's your nine all right, disambiguate the six nine right here. You always want to gobble up these markings because it makes it so much easier uh, to solve as you remove the marks. And this six means this is a one. That's a four. That's a one. That's a four. That's a six. Okay. And with this six, you can eliminate uh, this place. The Snyder six right here. Solve this cell for a six. All right. This cell's got to be a seven, and our last digit is a three in the corner. Bum bum bum. Now see if you can spot the advanced strategy in this next championship puzzle. Thank you so much for watching.